Not long after being taken into the Jedi Order from his homeworld of Stujon, Obi-Wan rose to the rank of Jedi Padawan and was therefore allowed to craft his own lightsaber. Despite not being the most interested in lightsaber combat, young Obi-Wan was excited to take on this new responsibility and crafted his first ever lightsaber in the image of Qui-Gon Jinn's. He did this as a sign of respect to his master and to continue his Jedi lineage forward. That leads us onto the Phantom Menace where Obi-Wan is forced to put his saber into use. Because of the sticky situation, let's say, aboard the Trade Federation ship, Obi-Wan and his master Qui-Gon have no choice but to draw their weapons. After this, the two are forced to descend down to the surface of Naboo below in order to warn the Queen of the impending invasion. Now at this point, Obi-Wan has to hide out in the swampy lowlands of Naboo where his lightsaber becomes fully submerged in water. When Obi-Wan gets out of the water though, he notices that something is very wrong. His saber is failing to ignite and shorts out as soon as he tries to turn it on. The reason for this is because his first saber didn't have a technology known as bifurcating cyclical ignition pulse. This technology or technique was discovered by Kit Fisto in the modern era and it led to most of the Jedi modifying their sabers in order to use it, making them waterproof. The technique utilized two kyber crystals in the hilt instead of one and switched current between them in order to avoid short circuiting. It was actually used in ancient times too, but it was forgotten for many hundreds of years. Lucky for Obi-Wan, his saber quickly recovered because he would need it soon in the fight of his life against Darth Maul. As the duel intensified, Obi-Wan was force pushed down a reactor shaft on the planet and his lightsaber was kicked down moments later, never to be seen again. Luckily though, he was able to use the force to grab his master's saber and use that to cut Maul in half and end the fight. After the significant achievement of defeating a Sith Lord, Obi-Wan was promoted to the rank of Jedi Knight and soon proceeded to construct his second lightsaber. This time he used all of his past knowledge and skill and combined it with Kit Fisto's new innovation in lightsaber technology to make it waterproof. Surprisingly though, Obi-Wan chose to keep the same design as the original saber, probably to honour his master after his death. Obi-Wan of course used this saber inside of the Outlander Club in the Coruscant Underworld, but he also made use of the new waterproof feature on many underwater missions, including one to rescue Master Yoda. He later used his second saber against bounty hunter Jango Fett on Kamino, but then lost the blade again after Dooku captured him on Geonosis. He never did find out what happened to that second saber, and we have no idea either in canon. After this, Obi-Wan and his apprentice Anakin are forced to fight Dooku and they're given two new sabers. A blue one for Obi-Wan and a green one for Anakin. During the huge battle that kicked off the Clone Wars in the Geonosis arena, Obi-Wan used a random saber given to him by a fellow Jedi Knight, Sefjet Jossal. Following the battle, Obi-Wan constructed his third and final lightsaber, the one you're probably most familiar with. Finally, after two previous iterations, Obi-Wan decided to forge his own path and create his own identity separate from Qui-Gon. This lightsaber was drastically different from his other two and served him very well in many battles over the Clone Wars. Moving deep into the Clone Wars, Obi-Wan also used the lightsaber of Asajj Ventress when the two went up against Maul and his brother Savage Opress. Too bad most Jedi aren't capable of bleeding their own kyber crystals because red certainly looks great in Kenobi's hands. Obi-Wan also used Master Adi Gallia's lightsaber after her death to the brute strength of Savage Opress when he mauled her with his horns. Horrible way to go. Throughout the rest of the war, Obi-Wan's saber saw action against the most infamous figures in galactic history like Count Dooku, General Grievous, and many many more. Finally, the saber was used in Obi-Wan's most important hour to battle his former apprentice and newly created Dark Lord, Darth Vader. He later used the same weapon to fight Darth Vader on the Death Star and after his body disappeared, Vader took the lightsaber just like Obi-Wan did to his all of those years ago on Mustafar. So that's all I've got today, I hope you guys are all getting hyped for the Kenobi show coming very shortly. If you are, hit that subscribe button, leave a like down below and I will see you in the next one.